This is Realty Talk with Ellie and Galen. Welcome to episode 42 of Realty Talk with Ellie and Galen. Um, I'd actually like to rewatch the clip that we have taping right now because this was just a mess to get this thing going. But we're here, 42. We are actually recording. And Ellie, what's a good word? What's a good word? Like, what's the good word? Like, how you doing? Oh. <laughs> like, um, not moist. Go back, go back um, under your black rock, black lake. My, um, I don't know. I don't what's, really... the, what's the population of black lake? Not much. Okay. Um, mostly, mostly snowbirds. Oh, really? Oh, like half, they spend half the year in Black Lake? Half yeah, the year that's, in what, like... that's what we were when we first moved up here. We only came up in the summertime. Oh, I think, I think we talked about that in your podcast. A long time ago, though. Episode two, right? Episode two of the podcast. No, three, four, something like that. I blacked out for that entire podcast. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, Ellie, what's our topic for today? Um, my topic is common misconceptions in real estate. Okay, hit us with it. All right, so um, the top one that I would like to address that... I, now that I'm talking about it, I feel like I just did this. So maybe, well, you're going to get a rehash if I just did it. But um, <laughs> one of the, the common things that I run into um, with, I'd say at least 50% of my buyers is thinking that um, I can only show you homes that I have listed. I can show you any home that's on the MLS. Um, that's just how it works. It doesn't matter if, if it's listed with another agency, another agent, someone who doesn't like me. It doesn't matter. I can still show the home. Um, another common misconception that I think kind of comes... Um, I have people who are working with like, having their parents help them out as they're buying a home seem to have this conception that you have to have 20% down to buy a home. You don't. There are a lot of loans now that allow even as low as 3% and there's actually a USDA direct loan, which is income based and you, you have to have a pretty low income to qualify for it, but you, where you can go even as low as 0% down. So you have options. You don't need to have, you know, 20 grand saved up just to buy a home. Um, another misconception is that you don't need a realtor. You can just go on Zillow and realtor.com. Yeah, you can find a home on realtor and Zillow.com, but you're going to still need help making negotiations, uh, writing contracts. Like there's, there's so much more than just finding a home. There's the entire process of actually purchasing the home. And that's really why I think we're here. Um, those are the top three that I can think of just rattling off. I think yeah. I had more, but no, I think those are good. I, yeah, yeah. The, uh, I think I think I posted this on Instagram the other day that like real estate agents or or you know realtors, um, they're more than just like glorified door openers. So yeah. I think what people th and this is what I always look at in my business and the things I try to focus on every day, and I'm going to continue to kind of refine this and get better at it. Is I really want to be doing activities every single day that move the needle forward for a company. So mm -hmm. I don't really, you know, and that could be from a brand standpoint, that could be a business development, that could be financially. Um, what I don't want to do, and that's why we have the structure that we have is for me to do paperwork and do the closing process and things like that. Like I'm very good at going out meeting with people. I'm very good at my knowledge of real estate. That's why Nicole is really good at her job she saves me the time from doing that job so I can go do more of what I'm good at. Yeah. And in turn, I can now provide more work for something that she's very good at. And it's a very good partnership. And that's what the one thing I really like about the system. Um, but again, it's the same thing. Like I, me going and like showing you a property and this is stuff I've reworked. Like, should I even be going out and showing properties anymore? I don't think my value as an agent is showing the property. I, yes, I, I can go to the property. I, yes, can I have a little more firsthand account like of looking at it? But I mean, how many times have I written up a contract while I'm in Florida? I think we did it once or twice this year that mm -hmm. you showed. I think, was it this year or last year? I went, I went away and I think I wrote three contracts while I was in Florida. Didn't show one of the properties. Like you, I think you showed one. I think my dad showed one, and I think it might have been Alan that showed one. Yeah. And literally, I just told the clients, "Hey, you're gonna go look at it. Just let me know what you think." I'm good. Like I can look. I've a lot of times I've either been in the home, and even if I haven't been in the home, I you can learn. You can know enough about market trends, what the buyer likes, days on market, activity level in regards to showings. Like I do everything except I physically didn't go open up the door, show you the property, and that's yeah. it. Um, my, my skill set is the knowledge of the market. My skill set is the strategy, the negotiations, the, um, honestly, the 
people skill of being able to talk to people, whether mm-hmm. they get too emotionally high or too emotionally low. Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of that takes practice and practice and reps and everything else. And I mean, you're talking about nine years and how many conversations I've had in nine years. I don't even want to count. I mean, thousands and yeah. you're talking, you know, whatever the 10,000 hour rule is. I mean, if I've had 10,000 conversations in 10 years, which I would easily think I'm probably double that I've gotten really good at having conversations with people about real estate and, and this could be just running into someone at a restaurant or a bar or a party, or it could mean a client on the phone or a client at a house. But, um, we do so much more and this is what we always, I think we talked about this the other day about technology like technology, yeah. and I just did a post on this, like technology will replace aspects of real estate. I don't see it replacing the the actual agent. They no. won't replace the human element. Now, granted, yes, could could someone argue, I never want to say never, I mean, could AI you know, robots, probably maybe AI. 50 years from now, But yeah. they talk about virtual reality. Like yeah. virtual reality will help, but yeah. people still want to go see the home unless you get to the point where you can physically in the room, even though we're sitting maybe at this chair mm-hmm. and looking through... Um, whatever VR, VR glasses yeah. and all of a sudden like you can physically touch everything and feel it and smell it and, and feel the area yeah. and the vibes of the home until we're that involved. You won't get it. If it's just a matter of like viewing, they have it. They have that matador cameras. And even, and even if they get to that point, it's still not replacing the most important aspect of having a realtor. I mean, looking at the home is important, but any, mm-hmm. a monkey could open the door for you. You know, a monkey's not going to write the contracts well, for you. I always talk about when people say like Zillow, great. Zillow's getting in the homes now. Um, Amazon's getting in the homes. Like yeah. these companies are getting in the homes, which is fine. I, I mean, I'm, I'm one. I'm, I'm adaptable enough that I'll adapt to anything. Absolutely. And if real estate somehow gets knocked away, why do you think I'm doing a million different things? I will have options. I will have avenues. I will have built enough of, uh, you know, where we have options. I'm yeah. not concerned about the future. I'm actually looking forward to it because I think whatever technology comes along, I embrace it in the sense that it helps you usually for the better. I know It'll people. It. I know people bitch about it, but at yeah. the end of the day. Everybody adapts. People bitch about Facebook. Guess what? Everybody and their grandmothers on Facebook. Change is scary. And That's what it comes down to. Exactly. Yep. So, it's gonna be a packed house here today. Yeah. Are you getting on? I can't have that. So. Is this gluten free? <gasps> oh well. It's, our, it's a gluten are you on this now? cinnamon roll that Meg just brought. Are you me. crashing the party? Because the the camera's on. She's already on it. So we're going to, no, put your, put your mic on. You can get on. I'm so excited to eat this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, um, I can't actually add a third person. Why can't I add a third person? There's gotta be. Is it plugged in? There's gotta be. Oh wait, we're going to do this. Okay. Ellie, don't, don't get crazy. Okay. Oh, we now we're on as a three way call. So this is actually kind of two worlds colliding right now. Hello. <laughs> we have our most ever guest of every, every podcast. <laughs> Megan Whedon here has nothing to do with real estate except she came in and brought Ellie gluten free cinnamon bun. That's a cinnamon big buns. deal. It looks amazing. Cinnamon buns. Look at that. It's cinnamon beautiful. buns and uh, <laughs> and it's and, squishy. And and, and uh, we're just gonna stop talking about cinnamon buns. Um, so um, you're just okay. mad you didn't get one. I don't want one. I've been tracking. We just talked about this. I'm on my. I'm G- like Galen super is healthy. Fit. I'm super. He's well, three not, weeks I'm, fit. I'm getting there. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm getting some. Some friends support me. Thank you, Ellie. And some friends just rate on my parade. Some friends know you better than others, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some friends care. Some friends care. Um, Meg, how are you doing today? We just decided to drop by. Yeah. Did you, Did you text us? I told Ellie to let me know where she was after work or when she got home or got to the office because I had a present for her. Oh. Okay. And. Here you are, and just crack. So we're talking about um, technology. I'm just gonna finish my rant, and then we can have you talk. Okay. That sounds great. So come up with the real estate topic. Okay. Because the real estate show. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, never mind. Oh, I'm gonna say no gluten. Um, so no, I, I really think technology will replace certain things. It'll replace like the. It will replace convenience. Things will be more convenient, and things more aesthetically, meaning like cameras and drones and, and the matador camera we can see the inside of the house all that stuff will be part of the real estate industry going forward real estate and this is why i always tell people if real estate was as simple as buying and selling real estate and you didn't need there's no human element like it's not by the numbers like mm-hmm. real estate yes numbers matter but i've already had a lot of things happen this year where yes we've had an idea of what they wanted to get for a number but guess what maybe job situation health situation marriage situation um just situation of feeling I don't want to move anymore or certain things have happened have adjusted the time period so or adjusted the money and time has been more of a factor so 
if it truly was just real estate like that, then great, you have it. Like you have the assessed value, you have the estimate from Zillow, whatever it is, there'd be a price tag, a literal, literal tag on the front door that said this house is worth $200,000. Yes, builders have that because you're building a house, but at the end of the day, that's even open to negotiations. What you don't have from, um, in a real estate aspect is, and this is when I meet with clients about listings, like why are you guys selling? Like what do you need to do? What do you need to accomplish? That is gonna give me a whole range of different strategies to talk to you and that strategy could be more price relate or price centric or more time centric because that's really your x y axis mm -hmm. and by knowing all that and having an idea someone knock is that enough you can come in there she is next guest yay next guest <laughs> do you want to talk do you want to talk about real estate sure really yeah all here, right swing over gonna, here sister here we got this um, okay, i'm gonna move this no sit, sit in that chair Sit in that chair. Roll it up. Roll it up. That would be cool. Do you know a lot about real estate? Um, not really. Okay, Why don't you so give her that one. We're gonna give that one. Well, because this is gonna be one. I don't want to screw Jordan up. Oh. Okay. How do you put it on? Oh. The headphone. Oh, I'll just put it on. Just like Walkman. Oh, this is great. You're 30 though, right? So it's kind of yeah, old. So that's. Yeah, yeah. Um. Okay. Wait. 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 We're all gonna do this again. You're Bear 30, so you're old. Bear with me. Bear with me. Okay, we're back in. We got four people now. Um. Yeah, Meg's turning. What? Do you want to say your age, Meg? I will be 25 in exactly 30 days. The silver year. I'll be 30. I'm pumped. 30 is a good year. Yeah. We're pumped. 89s. Oh, yeah. 89s. Ellie. He thought just, I was 22 the other day. So Ellie like, just oh, hit yeah, 26. Yeah, I got myself up. 26. You 27. positive? 27. <laughs> 26. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> um, you no. weren't certain, so I wanted you to suffer a little bit. No, no. So we're talking about... Uh, Real estate in the sense that real estate, if it really was worth that, you'd have a price tag. You'd have mm -hmm. a, a number on the front door that said this is the price of the of the house. You don't have that. There's a lot of human element. And really, I don't think that part's going to be replaced because someone having the knowledge is a service-based industry. We don't own any – we don't own the product. We don't own the house. We don't own – you know, if you're if you're at the coffee shop, you go to Starbucks or whatever. They Starbucks owns the coffee. They mm -hmm. sell it to you at a price. That's why they put the price up there. We don't. What we're doing is facilitating two people that are trying to come to an agreement. So we work as we are. Um, we, we're basically the advisors or the consultants in that transaction. Yeah, so I we're see using, myself as a consultant, not a salesperson. Exactly. I hate and I know I, I bugged you the other day about the way you had the title written, but. Um, I really hate how our industry considers us real estate salespeople um, because I'm not a salesperson. yeah, because I've I mean, been one before. I'm not one now. Yeah, and I, and I, I I'm like the worst world. I'm the world's worst salesperson because I never sell shit because I don't want to. Like I'm the worst fundraiser that there is because sorry that just will spaz out. I, I'm the worst fundraiser that there is because I hate asking for money. I hate asking for donations. I hate asking people to buy stuff. Like mm -hmm. I hate inconveniencing people. Yeah, it's kind of like our marketing, like. I will put all of our information out and show like our knowledge of stuff mm -hmm. and try to prove to you that we know what we're doing. And then in turn, we build up the trust level, a uh, trust um, level that hey, these people know what they're doing. We want to use them. We kind of like their vibe and stuff. Instead of saying, "Look at me, I'm the greatest. Use us, use us, use yeah, us." Yeah, I feel like sales like isn't inherently perceived as more manipulative, like trying to change people's perceptions about something in a, a positive or negative light and instead of doing that we're just kind of trying to set the record straight for people and show them the facts and let them make a honest decision based on what we have explained to them and shown them 100 percent. yeah yeah all right our two guests today meg do we have a real estate topic introduce yes. yourself because you've never been on realty talk hello realty talk fans um this is megan whedon uh if you've not listened to the galen trombley show i don't know what the hell you're doing <laughs> but you better jump on over and listen to my 18 episodes on over there talk about nothing um i am a local garbage lady some may consider me a salesperson but i consider myself a, a garbage consultant <laughs> as well well um, done well done i i yeah sell cans and solve problems and you just hit your one year? Yes, yesterday. Okay. One and year in garbage. So how does how how tell us how garbage relates to real estate? What's your what's your overlapping besides that you put the can out in the front of the garage or in front of the driveway and people can pick it up? I think it's the same as any industry. You're building relationships with people. Boom. Yeah, I like it. And you're giving them your best professional opinion. Do you find yourself a problem solver? Yes. Yeah. So I do too. and solve problems. That's, that's it. That's the go-to. That's the elevator. That's the pitch? Yeah. I like it. Okay. 
Is that anything anything else you want to touch on? Or just here for the cinnamon buns? Just here for the buns. Okay. Where's mine? Huh? Where's my cinnamon bun? <laughs> oh. These, these are special cinnamon oh. buns. Oh, you know what? You, you have, have to be gluten on free. time. Huh? You have to be on time. Are you, gl- are you gluten, intoler- gluten intolerant? Sure. No. Is that the term? You can eat gluten. Yeah. Yeah. We'll find better stuff later. Next time I'll bring real cinnamon buns. <laughs> um, You're th- real. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> they 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 had gluten. Okay, Meg had gluten waffles the other day with eggs. They were delicious. Peanut butter, peanut butter and eggs. Peanut butter, yeah, peanut butter on the waffle with eggs on top. And what else did you have? That's it. And bacon. Hmm. Okay, peanut butter and bacon on the waffle. Bear with me here. It's weird. It's it weird. So that's like a bacon milkshake. Remember, <laughs> like from Smooth Moves. <laughs> you remember? <laughs> yes, I remember that. <laughs> Maple bacon or maple bacon. No, bacon but maples. like, did you ever have like breakfast at your parents' house as a kid and they made a shit ton of eggs? Can I swear on this one? Mm-hmm, okay. Can. I already shit did. ton of <laughs> eggs for all your friends from the sleepover. And so you have like over easy eggs and then you put peanut butter on your toast and you dunk it in the yolk anyway. Same thing, but it's on a waffle. And then bacon just makes everything better. Mm-hmm. That's it's good logic. Okay. Ashley, anything real estate related? Sales related? Uh, Sales related or real estate related? Yeah, this is a real estate podcast. Really we will talk about, about everything estate, else so. on your podcast, but this is real estate related. Yeah, no, so. this is great. Like, I, I don't know. I like how you talk about, oh, I like how um, you talk about it being consulting because it's like similar to a lot of things that I deal with. So like, I want to hear all about it. So about real estate? Yeah. Do you listen to this podcast? I'm going to. <laughs> have you listened to any of the, Have you listened to any of the podcasts yet? No. Yeah. No support. I said you just subscribe. <laughs> it's only been what six days since you clicked subscribe. Oh no, I missed last week. So. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I forced you to subscribe. 14, 13 I was days. gonna say we've been going for a year now, almost a year. Yeah. Year. December we started filming from last mm-hmm. year. All right. That's that's on my to do list. All right. Perfect. Can you listen to every single one? Every single one. Um, no, but so so what do you think from a sales perspective? And we'll probably jump on this more after, but. How, how, what do you, from a sales background, like what's your sales success? Like, what do you think contributes to that? Oh, it's the same exact thing that you were just talking about. It's not being a salesperson. Mm -hmm. So I, my title is a consultant. Yeah. So it's the same thing. Like, I feel like for me, it's when I'm sitting down with somebody, it's caring about that person in front of me and how I can solve a problem that they have. Mm -hmm. It's not about trying to, you know, manipulate or trick them into purchasing something. It's what do I have that can help them? So, yeah. Yeah, hundred mm-hmm. percent. Um, so, room full of consultants at this table. <laughs> I like it. All right, I think that's it. Well, we're gonna finish this, but finish with you know it. You probably don't know it. We always finish Realty Talk with an office quote. Hmm. Meg, I know you're an office fan. Do you want us to kick it off first, and you can think of one? I have to, guys. I wasn't prepared. <laughs> I'm never prepared. I don't even know what I'm gonna say. Yeah, right he now. always butchers his. Like, I butcher you it so bad. Be worse than I've, he does it. I've never. I actually haven't even thought of my quote yet. And he's never ever done one properly. Ever. I definitely and he always won't. Has to sit I'm the not. I'm not like a fact and quote type person. I'm not that well, nitty gritty with details. <laughs> well, just, just like a scene that's maybe kind of funny that you can talk about and okay, like something that would come up that you'd be like at least talk because most people listening to this are not as crazy and as Ellie. Ellie knows everything like to the exact word. I fall asleep to the office every night and have for the last five years. It's, I know everything. It's probably it's probably like it's like like an episode goes on when she's sleeping and it just like it's ingrained <laughs> it's in wired her head. into my brain at this point. Yep. Yep. All right, GT. Okay, so am I first? Mm-hmm. So again I'm gonna butcher this, but this is the scene. Um we're talking about something with the office and Michael Scott goes, We're all family except Toby. <laughs> and actually Toby's divorced so he doesn't have a real family at all. <laughs> He's so like I, he's not even a part of his own family. See, okay, thank. And Ellie always <laughs> Ellie, Ellie always comes on and corrects what I, I butchered, but she at least knew the, the scene. So um, we all hate Toby. Don't be a Toby. Go ahead. So the, the first thing that pop in, popped into my mind was when they were all trying to break the silent record, and Jim like holds up the sign that says we've been this silent now for fourteen minutes or whatever, and then Kevin opens the candy bar and everyone stares at him and he goes, "Oh yeah." <laughs> <laughs> I love that part. I think my most memorable um, office scene ever was also Kevin. He's one of my favorites. Um, when he puts the tissue boxes on his <laughs> on his feet at the wedding, and then he sticks his ice or his feet in the ice cooler at the end of the wedding. Uh-huh. He goes, "These dogs are barking." Yeah, that, that yeah, is, I don't remember any words from that. I just remember that, his that, feet. I actually I used that one because that's when he goes. He goes, 
So I got six numbers. <laughs> yeah. One more number. And I almost had a com- or I almost had a phone number. <laughs> yeah. Or something like that. But that's one of the greatest episodes. Like the wedding, Jim and yeah. Pam's wedding was one of my favorites. Do you watch The Office? I sometimes have it in the background. So you, have you so seen? Have you seen recently, The Office all the way through? No, not all the way through. Good lord! But the last episode that was playing okay. is one of the early ones, and it was. Um, okay, can you tell me who has a crush on Pam? Jim. Okay, so so they got married. Yes. Okay. What? <laughs> they have children. Okay, together. you know what? It doesn't even matter. They got Get married. Out. They had two kids, <laughs> Philip and Cece. Don't worry about it. Keep going. Okay, so... We're just ruining ruining shows. The episode was when he had told her that he had a crush on her when he took her into the kitchen. Well, when they met in the kitchen and then he was telling her that he had a crush on her, but it was like a year ago. ago, so it doesn't even matter. Yep. That that was the most recent scene that I've Um Did, did the... The Booze Coos episode. Yes. Did... did uh, does Jim and Pam's relationship make you cry? No. I no? think Jim's really? kind of a jerk, actually. Wow. Okay. He, wow. Yeah. Ellie, stomp, curb stomp him. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. I liked them when they were in like the, the fun, flirty office yeah. phase, but then once they actually got together, I didn't really like them It was them too anymore. real life, and yeah. he was kind of a, a jerk, and, and I just stopped. Like, Okay. Phyllis and um, Bob, Bob Vance. Vance, they are goals. They love each other, they and do. they have hey. sex in restaurants, Bob, so that's Bob pretty Vance, hardcore. Vance for duration. <laughs> what, what line of work are you in, Bob? <laughs> I love that. That was, that was actually the last episode I watched. Everyone has officially tuned out of this podcast by now. <laughs> that's all right. We don't, do it, we don't do it for the listeners. We do it for Philip. Shout out, Philip. I know you're listening to this. Um, so I think that's it. We're going to end there? Good, good, good. Yeah. Good. Okay. I want to go eat my... That's episode 42 with Cinnamon Buns and Ellie, <laughs> Ashley, and Meg.